I'm just curious, can I see a show of hands of, of people if, if you've ever had this experience? It's the middle of the night and you are obsessing about something. Your brain is spinning and there is not a damn thing you can do about it at three o'clock in the morning. Who has had that experience? Okay, can you guys just look around? Keep your hands up and look around for a little bit. Okay. This is what the brain does. Okay, this is the brain's job. This is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to come up with all of the problems that could arise. So it's really important to know that there is nothing inherently wrong with anxiety. Worry and anxiety keep us alive. If we didn't worry, we would like fall off the edge of cliffs. We would marry that jerk we were dating in high school. Like it's important to worry about things. But the problem for those of us who struggle with anxiety is that we have that anxiety and worry in unnecessary contexts and inappropriate proportions. So that's really what we're trying to look at. We're not trying to say we should never be anxious ever again. We're just trying to moderate it a little bit. And the good news is that there are ways that you can train your brain. There are ways that you can make yourself less anxious. Anxiety is not your fault. You know it's true because it's in purple and everything in purple is true. So this is really, really important because blaming yourself for anxiety, that's a whole bad deal. So anxiety is not your fault, but wait, there's more. You have the most resources to make life easier for yourself. And that is just as important as the first part. So I am never going to say, like, you should just cheer up. You should chill out and relax. Like anybody that uses those kind of terms, they, they deserve a swift flick to the forehead because that's just, it's annoying, it's patronizing, and it's completely unhelpful. But we live in this culture that really likes to get things wrapped up in a 22 minute sitcom kind of time frame. That's not what this is. But the thing is that you have choices. So you can decide that you are never going to be good enough because of that thing that your dad said when you were nine years old and that you need to get everything perfect and you can't ever make a mistake because you know that's just who you should be. You would never hold that up for anybody else, but you should get everything perfect. And you can blame yourself for things you did a really long time ago and people you hurt and lies you told and mistakes you made. And you can hang on to all of that. And that is a, that is a valid choice. You can, you can do that. But there's also an alternative. You can realize that everybody makes mistakes. You can realize that there is not a single person on the planet who is perfect all the time. You can forgive yourself. You can forgive other people. You can get rid of the garbage that is not serving you in your life. And you can like go out in the world and see some cool stuff. So you get to make that decision. I vote for the second one, but you get to make that decision. So there are really specific things that work. Um, and we're going to talk about some things here today. And, and these will work if you have been diagnosed with depression and an anxiety disorder like I have, or if you just kind of get stressed out by things every once in a while. So this is my new touchstone. This is my mantra. Embrace your weird. So this helps me through all kinds of really uncomfortable things. And it reminds me 
that everybody has something that they think is really weird about themselves. Something that they think they need to hide, they need to be ashamed of. If people find out about it, then those people are gonna decide that they are not worthy of love and belonging, which is all any of us really want. But the problem with trying to hide this stuff is that it takes you hostage. For me, the stuff I think is so weird about me is, is my unusual childhood and the fact that I didn't do a lot of the things that, that everyone else has done. And the fact that I have this anxiety disorder. I struggle with this. But I realized that those things, the effort it takes to try to hide from all of that, it really means that I'm not living my life authentically. Those things, they like zip tie your hands to the radiator and you are stuck in the basement and it gets really, really lonely. And so the best thing that we can do is you just show up, right? You're honest about this stuff. You drag it out of the basement, you bring it to the light and it loses a lot of its power. <laughs>